So it seems like a whole bunch of information surrounding AMD's next generation RDNA 4 graphics cards has surfaced on the web. And it turns out that AMD's marketing department is going through one of those cycles where they decide to change up their naming scheme and confuse everyone. But aside from that, we've got some information and specs and leaked benchmarks giving us a bit of an insight on where their cards may land. Ultimately, it comes down to the price. They just got to hit that sweet spot for FPS per dollar and they'll do well. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Pretty eventful week. There's a whole bunch of information surfacing on the web surrounding next generation hardware. Typically around this time, it dies down due to the holiday season, but with CES right around the corner, with AMD and Nvidia gearing up to release new hardware during the event, I suppose that makes sense that we're seeing all this information surface now. The first thing I wanted to talk about was that AMD may have accidentally or maybe intentionally leaked their next generation RDNA 4 design. Users on Reddit reported seeing an AMD ad featuring a picture of a Ryzen 9 box and a never before seen graphics card. This ad did come from an official AMD account and it's now been removed. The graphics card in question has their Radeon branding and it's a design that we've never seen before for any previous generation. Sometimes AMD will have limited edition versions of their reference cards or stock models so I was thinking maybe it was that, but I couldn't find anything that looks similar. And I'm fairly certain it's not an AIB model because typically for their own internal ads, AMD does not include partner models unless it's specifically an ad to promote all of them or their partnerships. The other thing I was thinking about was that maybe this was just an AI generated design from someone on the marketing team. I mean, we've been seeing a lot of that with corporations and all sorts of industries utilizing generative AI for ads and infomercials. There was recently this whole fiasco with the Call of Duty community where for the Christmas zombie event, there were AI generated loading screens and the fans were not happy with it. There were like zombies with six fingers or eight fingers, but that's besides the point. Nonetheless, I think if this is really the next generation reference design, then that's pretty good. Way better than the RDNA 3 design, if you ask me. It looks clean and premium with the silver and gray accents. In a way, it kind of reminds me of the MSI Ventus design that you see with their 40 series, which is kind of funny or comical because MSI said they're done making AMD cards. Well, but I'm not sure if they have uh, any plans to make RDNA 4 cards, but I know they stopped making RDNA 3 cards. Video cards on Twitter, when they were confirming who it was posted by, had a user by the name of Huang Anfu, who's leaked Radeon stuff in the past, confirmed that this was an RX 9070 XT. Wait a minute. Whatever happened to 8800 XT or 8700 XT? Well, this leads us into our next topic where we have all the Watts on Twitter sharing a whole bunch of SKUs pertaining to AMD's next generation RDNA 4 lineup. And from what we're seeing here, their marketing department has once again decided it was time for them to change their naming scheme. Oh boy. Now I'm all for changing naming schemes for the better. And at the end of the day, the product, if it is good, fast and delivers at a solid price, then who really cares what it's called? But this is one of the reasons why AMD's Radeon division is a bit of a laughing stock within the industry because they just can't seem to stick with a congruent and easy naming scheme that's, you know, easy to follow. Like 8800 XT would have worked out fine. I'm not really sure what the purpose of changing it was. And the next generation, it would have carried over as the 9000 series. Like they had RX 480 and then 580 and then decided to go to Vega 64. And then you had RDNA 1 with the 5700 XT in 2019. They've been following that naming scheme since then, but now they want to change it again. And we have the 9070 and the 9060 XT. And this just sounds like they're copying NVIDIA. And I really hate it when companies do that. I don't know, maybe it's just a psychological trick for Mindshare, but I think it's kind of cheesy when they do start to, or they indulge in stuff like this. NVIDIA has been following the same naming scheme for like the past 15 years. And even Intel have a really solid naming scheme. The generation is no denoted by the first letter and then the SKU number. So you had A770 and A580 for Alchemist. Then we recently got B580 for Battle Mage. And then you know that'll carry over as C580 or C770 for Celestial, which is what their next generation architecture is called. Just stick with one naming scheme that people have been used to and call it a day, right? There's really no good reason to change 
change it unless the number is getting too large. Then, yeah, I guess they have to change it. They had also mentioned that there will be an RX 7750 and RX 7650. I'm assuming these are just refreshed overclocked models of existing models just to fill in some gaps for the time being. So not really going to go into that. And then we have variations of the 9070 with what looks like is a cut down model and some mobile SKUs. What further corroborates with this information is Momo on Twitter had shared a screenshot from what I believe is a French retailer who had some SKUs accidentally listed on their product filters. And then we had video cards sharing a post from HXL who are sourcing an editor from the Chiphel forums in China. They mentioned that naming scheme has changed after speaking with AIBs within the region. We also had Huang corroborate this with the same thing with FSR4 and 9000X3D mentioned in their post. So it looks like multiple different sources here are coinciding with each other. So this is more than likely true. In addition to that, all the Watts also shared some information pertaining to where the 9070 XT and the cut down 9070 will land in terms of performance. So the former is going to offer performance that's about on par or a bit better than the 7900 GRE and the cut down 9070 will be on par with an RX 7800. XT. So I saw initial reactions to this and people being disappointed because for a while we had rumors circulating that RDNA 4's top end SKU would offer 40-80 performance. Now in my last video where we discussed this stuff I said I didn't think it was likely going to offer that levels of performance but be more in line with a 4070 Ti or 4070 Ti Super performance at best. And that's it for being generous, which don't get me wrong, that's still excellent performance for the vast majority of users. They just need to be able to price it right. To further back up their claim, they had also shared a cropped screenshot of the RX 9070 XT from 30 Mark Time Spy's GPU benchmark, and the GPU score attained was 22,894. To put that into better perspective, a user from Twitter by the name of Tomas Goronsky created a table with current generation GPUs and their average scores. So from this table, we can see that the 9070 XT is the same performance as a 4070 Ti or RX 7900 GRE. The 4070 Ti Super is about 6% faster and the RX 7900 XT is about 17% faster. If these scores are true, then it means that the top end RDNA 4 SKU, Navi 48, is nowhere close to a 4080. Furthermore, they also showed a screenshot of their overclocked RX 6800 XT, a card from 2020, and you can see how theirs is about 2% faster. But we'll also have to wait and see how much the RX 9070 XT can be overclocked, but more or less, it seems like for RDNA 4, the top end SKU, it's going to be offering 7900 GRE or 4070 Ti performance at best. So I said earlier in this video that this level of performance isn't particularly bad and a segment which AMD will be targeting, most people will be pulling at 1440p and 1080p and those cards are able to fulfill that role just fine. Granted, we're talking about just raster performance. With ray tracing, our DNA 4 I hear will be leveraging AI and their upscaler FSR4 will be piggybacking off of that. So in ray tracing, we could see a nice surprise there where it could be faster than the last generation cards by a good margin with the inclusion of those softer features. But let's talk about pricing because all the watts mentioned how for Navi 48, so the 9070 XT and 9070, we're looking at a range of $449 to $649. And then for Navi 44, so the 9060 XT, it'll be approximately $179 to $350. Here's my take on this. The 9070 XT can't be more than $450, maybe $500, but even that would be stretching it in my opinion, unless AMD has a never before seen feature that makes people FOMO because we have already seen seen how having an AI upscaler with ray tracing, NVIDIA already has that and so does Intel. So if they're just going to be $50 to $100 cheaper than NVIDIA, that is not going to be moving the needle for them. And earlier this year, Jack Hewen sat down with Tom's Hardware and did this whole interview where he said that we need to go for market share, we can't go after the minority. Like if AMD releases a GPU in 2025 that's about 10% faster than the stock 6800 XT, which had an MSRP of 649, then that just looks terrible in my eyes. This thing at most needs to be about $500 and it needs to come with a really good software feature, otherwise AMD will just find themselves in the same position they've been battling with these past few years. Launch a product at the wrong price, get poor or bland reviews, then drop the price six months later to where it should have launched at, but the damage is already done at that point. People have already moved on and they've gotten NVIDIA or they maybe get Intel. Look, right now you can buy a 7800 XT for around $470, maybe cheaper with the current holiday deals. 
It'll offer the same raster performance, but you'll just be missing out on some AI features that AMD seems to be promising with RDNA 4. I've also seen 7900 GREs sell for like $530, but those are much harder to find these days because, well, I think they're discontinued. Not to mention, if Intel comes out with an ARC B770 for like $350 or $400 and it offers like 85% of the performance, then that's just going to be even more embarrassing for AMD because Intel also offers AI upscaling and ray tracing on par with the 4 series. Not to mention that if AMD is charging a premium based on their new software feature, like if that's what they're banking on, that only goes as far for them based on developer support. How many games support DLSS versus AMD's latest FSR? How many games support Reflex versus Radeon Anti-Lag? I don't want to sound like I'm being too judgmental here because we still have to wait for the announcement to see if that's true and what the card will be capable of once reviews come out, but based on this initial information, it's not looking that promising. And the reaction I've seen from the community and also the AMD subreddit, well, let's just say that people were fuming. But that's going to be wrapping it up for this one, you guys. We'll be touching base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.